In this recording, I'm going to show you guys how to create just basic shields behind logos. A shield uh, behind a logo is a, a shape of some kind. So if you think about, say, the UPS logo, UPS logo is this literally looks like almost like a police shield or a military shield uh, and it has UPS logo in it. But shields aren't necessarily in the shape of what we think of like with badges. Um, they could be any shape that we want it to be. So for example, if you think of the Twitter logo, it's a square with rounded corners and the little bird in it, that that square with rounded circles is a shield. Uh, the Heinz bottles, where we see the kind of a, a different sort of shape, that's a shield. So a shield is created to create separation so that the words stand out of a logo or on a product um, stronger. So I'm going to show you guys uh, really quickly, well, as quick as we can, um, how to create just like that standard sort of like a UPS shield, but just understand that a shield can be any shape that we want it to be. So to create that kind of standard, uh, like that UPS shield, you're going to select the polygon tool. You're going to click on it, and to create that shield, uh, it takes five points. So we'll click it, and there's my polygon tool. I'm going to rotate this polygon tool. so that the point is at the bottom. Let's scale this thing up a little bit so you guys can kind of see what we're doing here. And there's our shield. However, to create, again, that uh, kind of shield effect, what we want to do is these side panels have to be more, they have to be straight in order for it to work. If you can think about those badges, you think about that they're not angled like this although this would make a perfect shield. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rulers. You see my rulers up here at the top, and if you don't see them, you go to View, and you're going to find your rulers, and you'll select Show Rulers or Command-R, and your rulers will show up. Drag one ruler from the side and attach it to the point down here. Then take your Direct Select tool, the arrow, and you're going to click the point here, So it's at the corner. And you're going to drag that point so it lines up straight with your guide, so it's nice and straight. I'm going to take that guide again, again, line it up to my corner point, click and drag with my direct select tool so it lines up with my guideline. I don't need my guideline anymore. And there's my shield. I'm going to go to Object, Expand Appearance. So it takes on more of my shape of what I need it to be. And then to get that roundedness, roundedness I'm going to go to my effects. I'm going to go to Warp. And uh, we'll select like fish eye. Well, not fish, actually. Fish eye. And uh, it's usually about 45%. And that you can see it's already starting to create that kind of roundness at the bottom of it. Um, you can use others to kind of create that uh, sort of effect as well. Um, inflate creates that kind of uh, shield to it and uh, bulge is another one that kind of rounds it out but makes it a little more taller so uh, those are the way you kind of create those I'm gonna go back to fisheye here because I'm trying to create that sort of UPS sort of shield 45 percent gonna click OK and then we we'll go back up to my object and expand its appearance and then there's my kind of UPS shield so we're gonna create some text I'm going to cut this text and create it on a new layer. I'm 
I'm gonna lock my shield layer. Name it shield. And we're gonna expand this a little bit so we can kind of see it. And we are gonna open up my swatches so that I can pick some colors here. And I'm gonna open up my character palette so I can pick some fonts here. Because I want something that's going to be kind of bold, and right now Myriad Pro only offers me a regular. So we're going to pick one that's a little bolder. We'll take impact. All right, and uh, again, a shield uh, just serves as a background. So let's just make this guy kind of a golden orange. Actually, I'm going to change my color mode here for my document. CMYK. And we're going to select, make this kind of a golden sort of yellow. That way I got some contrast going on here. And remember, again, Shield's purpose is to uh, create some separation for some text. So we could put some graphics or if it's a, um, we'll show you kind of really quickly. Oops. You know, if it's two words, um, we can fill up some of this negative space with the second word or whatever. And uh, I can then create some more effects to it if I want. Again, I want that shield to uh, be in the background, hence the name background. And I might take my effects and my warps again Uh, arch is a nice one. We'll go with arc upper. I don't want to distort it too much because I want it to be able to be read easily. And then, of course, once I've applied a warp effect, I'm going to expand its appearance. And uh, I can do stroke effects to this, as kind of like I showed you in some other. Uh, projects. We'll make this stroke around it uh, black. Let's open up our stroke palette. And I'm making it black so it kind of, let's expand our options. And I'm making it uh, black because I want it to blend in to be part of the design. Um, a little bit, so I'm gonna round my corners off and set this to a nice thickness so that that black kind of becomes part of it. Copy it, and I might rename a layer here. Create a new layer. I'm going to go to edit, paste in place, and lock my layer down here so that I can take this guy and turn that stroke off on it. And then you can see how the black stroke uh, around it plays with my positive and negative space um, that uh, it allows me to create the design. So it's part of the design. So we can tweak this a little bit more. Um, we're going to thicken that stroke around it again and uh, I'm gonna copy my layer above get my orange just my orange letters without a stroke create a layer above I can duplicate the layer too it's um, six of one half a dozen the other one of the nice things about 
uh, illustrators or, or any really Adobe software is that there's a variety of ways that you can get from point A to point B. Um, so on this layer, I'm going to make the stroke white. Again, I'm going to kind of round it off and make it nice and kind of thick again. And, um, and that way it doesn't close up my letters too much. And uh, we'll create some more uh, depth with this by copying it again. And on this layer underneath, rather, this layer, I'm going to make that stroke black again, round it out. Oops, helps if I select it. Uh, make my stroke black, round it out. And then I'm going to create a new layer. in place and so that gives you that kind of two stroke effect or technically three there's a black stroke and then there's a white stroke and then there's a black stroke and uh, so name this one so that we can navigate best practices and we'll call that the second black stroke them what they are so that um, we can easily navigate them and then I'm gonna just select everybody and just kind of move them down a little bit center them a little bit more in my shield but you get the general idea is that a shield is any kind of shape that we want it to be. This could be a circle, this could be a square, a diamond, um, however you want it to be. And the shield's purpose is, uh, again, think like UPS and all kinds of, it doesn't necessarily have to be a badge, but its purpose is to sit in the background, but push the text forward so the text can be uh, viewed quicker, easier. And this is how you create shields in Adobe Illustrator.